So the question, of course, is that is Sanders here for America or against America? Now, there are a lot of politicians, Hitler being one of them, that said to people that I'm here to rectify the ills of society. All of them seem to have a wonderful ability to create infinitely greater catastrophes than the societies they came to rectify. Of course, Obama ran completely on an anti-establishment, Washington's evil, I'm here to save you, which is the same ticket Bernie's running under. And really it's the same ticket as all radicalism, whether it was communism, um, the rich are evil. Um, and it's a very interesting thing. Why is it that radicals are so obsessed and they're genuinely obsessed? They're not like faking obsession. They're genu genuinely obsessed. <laughs> like Bernie's accusing Mike Bloomberg of being a billionaire. And so, what's wrong with being a billionaire? And if I'm a trillionaire, you have a problem? If I suddenly poverty is um, uh, special? I mean, he's a millionaire compared to me. I'm Compared to him, I'm poor. So, what's going on here? And the same thing is with Obama. He accused the wealthy, and yet the guy's living like a king. So the answer is, it's all based on a simple psychological, um, what you would call a disturbance, a true psychological illness. And the illness, of course, is jealousy. Now, somebody who feels good about themselves is not jealous of other people. Somebody who has taken on a notion, they call it narcissistic wounding, that they are bad. So their whole life, they're trying to prove that they're good. Meanwhile, they think that other people think that they're bad. That's obviously how they came up with this problem, because somebody they trusted said that they're bad. And so they believe that the world, because we think that the world outside of us, one person can represent the world outside of us, because there's me and there's the world. So one person can destroy another person, likewise can build another person. Because if I tell you you're awesome and you believe me, you think the world thinks you're awesome, so you think the world thinks you're awesome, so you are confident in the world. But if I say, oh, you're a jerk, and you think that I'm a credible source, and you think I represent the world, and then therefore you think the world thinks you're a jerk, so you have to pretend that you're not a jerk, you have to show everybody how good you are, that's called perfectionism. So, and Obama certainly was a perfectionist, and Bernie seems to me to be a perfectionist, and basically they're suffering from a severe emotional disturbance. And the problem with these people is that subconsciously we're jealous. And when we are miserable, we seek to make others miserable. You know, obviously this is a sensitive subject and it has to be spoken about sensitively, but why is it that once a month, a woman who may one day give her life for her husband wants to take her husband's life. Um, and the answer is because when we're miserable and other people are not miserable, we want them to be miserable. And the funny thing is, is anybody who's been miserable and in that state has bullied people, which pretty much is a natural reaction, can tell how come when you're miserable, it's not that you think the other person needs to be miserable because I'm miserable. That's not the way it works you actually see genuine evil in the other person. And the answer is because every single person has good and evil in them. But when a person's in love, they say love is blind. All you see in the other is beauty because that's all you want to see. But if a person is miserable and they are seeing all the ugly in the other person, that's all they want to see. Now, consciously, they're not aware that they're seeing what they want to see, but it's obvious you see what you want to see. And therefore, you know, whatever primary state we're in, whether it's a state of love or whether it's a state of jealousy, which are basically the two primary states, 
Um, there's also a state of fear where people are seeing everything as dangerous, right? There's, God forbid, a state of depression where they basically having thoughts of committing suicide because subconsciously they hate themselves. Um, and so, and then there are various different passions people have. I don't know, somebody that's into music will see music everywhere. Someone that's into art will see art. And so basically you're just seeing, I wouldn't say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, life and perception of reality is in the eyes of the beholder. So the very first sign that somebody who only sees what's wrong, but it's not like, okay, it's okay to see what's wrong, but I want to fix it. There are a lot of things if I could do, I would fix. It bothers me that people are hungry. I've set up many food pantries. You know, it bothers me that people don't have access to greater spiritual wisdom. I work nonstop every day for many hours in disseminating spiritual wisdom. But the point is, that I don't hate people for not having wisdom. God forbid I don't hate people for being poor. I feel compassion. And so the difference between me and a radical is because I feel compassion and I do things about it. I'm not trying to build myself up. I don't do nearly as much as I should, but it, I don't have an emotion of hate. Anybody who has an emotion of hate wants to destroy someone else because that's the emotion of hate. It's the emotion of destroying. When you want to kill a mosquito and you get a pleasure, it's because you hate the mosquito because he's, he's hurting you. He's bugging you. And so that's just human nature. And so the person who gets these delusions of grandeur, like Bernie, who thinks he's God and he thinks he knows what he's talking about, the guy, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. You know, <laughs> there was an interview. The Meshugana. So somebody speaks about climate and jobs. So he says, you have to stop and think. And I'm, I'm doing this video not for people that realize that there are idiots out there, but for people that are naive and think that the guy's smart. So the guy says, yeah, we're going to like do these climate change jobs. It's going to cost two million jobs. Two million. So he's for sure, he's going to eradicate 2 million. 2 million jobs is a lot of jobs. Trump administration is very proud of, I don't know, creating 500,000 jobs. Race 2 million jobs out of a country of 300 million people, which so many people are retired, not working, this and that. That's a lot of jobs. And he says, but we're going to create 20 million more. Really? How does that math work out? A guy that doesn't say a true word and I saw this with Obama when Obama was I see he was on Oprah and so what happened was Obama um, is challenged by Oprah and Oprah thought he was God it was actually the opposite but anyway um, so she says to Obama well you know you say you don't fly on private jets but you flew in that private jet, so he ignores the question, and then he accuses Oprah of deflecting a question. Now, if you know anything about psychology, the fact that you accuse someone of doing something that you do is a sign that A, you're denying your own evil, and B, you see evil in others. So it took me five minutes to realize this guy is evil. And he proved me right. You know, we have to take responsibility. It's very easy to say, oh, I'm a liberal. But really, what are you? You're a timid idiot. Because if you voted for somebody that because of him, 500,000 people are dead, 50 million people are displaced in one country, who elected that moron Obama. Was it you? Would have you done it again because he sounds good? So, I mean, people that are radicals, it's like, this is an example that anybody can understand. You're in the school, there's a bully. So what do you do? You don't want to get hurt by the bully. So you become, you try to become his friend and you try to bolster him. Meanwhile, he's hurting everybody else. And so, just to conclude that, I mean, 
anybody with real life experience, I lived in Africa and I saw evil firsthand. So people can be evil. And the sign that they're evil is that they're angry. The British government sent, I don't know if he was a spy or maybe just came, just to get an understanding, who was Hitler? You understand, before this guy was in power, they wanted to figure out who is this guy. So they came back and listened to the assessment. He is driven by anger. He is driven by anger. 